Good morning, everybody. This is Damian Black here, back with more Magic the Gathering. Uh, as you guys can see, things are a little bit different, and uh, yeah, my computer's running slow if you didn't notice that. Um, I've moved, which is why I've been missing in action for so long. So I should be back in theory. Um, everything's always in theory, don't worry. But it's going to be a little bit longer as I'm still doing construction around the house and things like that. But for the most part, I wanted to get something out there to kind of let you guys know where things were sitting. And that's that we're pretty much back where we were uh, after the first break. This is the first time that I've been back uh, <laughs> playing Magic since the last time I took a break. Um, this is more or less what I'm going to be going with the very first time out. Wanted to give a couple things a try, a uh, couple things that were causing problems and whatnot and things that may or may not be able to be fixed. Um, I guess first and foremost, from what I looked at, because I've only had a chance to really look at stuff and haven't had really much of a chance to play. The stuff that I've seen is that the uh, Miracles deck is pretty much out of the format, at least the Rest in Peace version, which kind of makes it a little silly that I'm switching over and dropping, as you notice, the Goyf entirely. Uh, it also makes it a little bit weird that I'm trying not to rely on the graveyard as much as I did before. That being said, I finally got rid of the Goyf, and you have no idea of how happy I am that I got rid of the Stair Contest champion. Um, what we've substituted in his place was Bitter Blossom. There we go. It's like, where is it popping up at? And the reason why we're substituting Bitter Blossom is because, one, about that time, this card was considered to be great. Uh, it was very tribal as you can see from the blown up card, obviously. So that helped it out in the Fairies deck, but the fact that it gave you one creature per turn, even though it was at the cost of a life, was a huge thing. And in the current meta, I think that this card will be an issue, and them stopping me from losing life isn't going to be the worst thing in the world. I mean, it, it's, it'll kind of suck every now and then, but for the most part, it's kind of nice to know that there are nothing but threats in this category. Like everything in this two drop category is a permanent threat. Any creature, threat. Autumn, well, I forgot that this is a two drop. My bad. Almost everything in here. Uh, Sylvan Library, threat. There we go. Dark Confident, obvious threat. And Stoneforge Mystic. Most people will be afraid of the Batter Skull, but I've put it in the board. But I found that Sword of Fire and Ice is probably the route to go right now as far as those things. Yes, yes, my computer is running slow. No crap, it's been on for four days. Ugh. Only four days, yeah, trust me. I do a lot with this thing every now and then. Um, all that being said, as you notice, we've put two tops back in. I'm tired of people blowing up libraries and top is just fine as far as getting things out there, so... I'd rather go with the two tops as well as it being able to shuffle in and, and hide itself from removal. It allows me to have a card at any point in time, um, which may not seem like much, but it actually is. Some things that I was looking at, the, <clears throat> excuse me, source the plowshare to abrupt decay count. Because I'm running the Mox version, I don't want to have to worry about my turn one, which is why I've got three swords right now. Also, there are more things that are getting played that this can't kill anymore, and a lot of people are planning on this Abrupt Decay actually kind of being a little bit worthless against their deck. I mean, it's a one-for-one one that can't be countered, but this is a one-for-one one that kills anything. So that's why I'm giving the swords the benefit of the doubt. I've got the there we go. It's like the fourth sword's in there. It's not sorted by casting cost because of clump. The four swords in the board to cover up in case I play against anything that's got a lot of creatures, that's got anything big, that gives me the kill anything plan. Um, in theory, at least. We'll find out as, as time passes. Uh, but the abrupt decays are still good for killing off things that you need killed off. Things like opposing Liliana's. Uh, any Sylvan libraries that get down or things like that. It just gives me something else that can kill. And as you notice from the older list, there's the one Abrupt Decay, or two Abrupt Decays, in comparison to the older list where it was four swords and three. So you take one out of both, shoved it in there, and then we went on with life. Um, all that being said, I'm not expecting too many issues. Uh, I guess the biggest change so far is, as you notice, there's nothing beyond three. 
So everything in my deck is susceptible to Abrupt Decay. But if you think about it, Lingering Souls, which, ta-da, we're trying it out. I've had a little bit of luck with it. I've kind of enjoyed this card a lot, and it's really good against opposing Liliana as a sacrifice effect. So Jace is it's really good with these swords and these jits. It's really good with the Bitter Blossom. I mean, it, it just gives you bodies, which is kind of what you want. It'll stall out the game when you need it to stall out. It'll hopefully win the game when we need it to win, but we'll find out. Um, where was I? Completely forgot. That's okay. Um, hopefully what I'm looking forward to is that there are no green sun zeniths. So yeah, no dried arbor, no creature land at all. Um, was looking at different ones and the problem is that the ones that I want are treetop village and what's the stupid other card? Uh, stirring wildwood. Um, because the only black green land is both ghosts or whatever that thing is called and that, God, I don't need that reminder. I'm just going to leave that up the next time it comes. You guys will just have to fear knowing that my computer is running slowly. So, yeah, no man lands right now. These are actually not supposed to be in here, but right now I don't want to put the time and energy into finding the fourth wasteland and figuring out what this is going to be. So for right now, Horizon Canopy is up. It's what we're going to be using, and that's okay. Uh, we do have the second scrubland, as I was talking about before. That's not a biggie. I got that actually right before I moved. And we're also, if you look at this, running a life from the loan, which has been staring you in your face for a little while. This is more of a filler card at the moment. It's kind of an open spot. Don't know exactly where things are going. Um, just kind of doing its own little thing here. As well as uh, the Zealous Persecutions are back. I don't know if they were back for the last video. I haven't actually watched. And it's because I got tired of basically offing my bobs every single time that I wanted to do something and now with the souls as well as the bobs as well as the bitter blossom tokens it creates a situation where I don't get the opportunity to do it for the minus one and not lose everything because I've only got a couple of creatures that can survive that um, well I guess this counts too and anything that's on and I could pump something but whatever not important enough uh, so we've switched back, and as promised, that's not going anywhere. So deal with it. Uh, and we'll reboot my computer and do some other stuff with it at a later point. But right now, I'm not too worried about it. Uh, let's see, any other changes that I've made? <laughs> Quit sc scanning through. Ah, Gaddock Teague. Yeah, no Gaddock Teague in the deck. Uh, with no Green Sun Zenith at all, there's no reason for me to have a Singleton Gaddock Teague. I'd rather plow on more discard, more other ways to affect combo decks than to have Gaddock T. And while I don't believe discard, excuse me, is the way to beat combo decks, I do believe that it's extremely powerful against them. Uh, we are a little bit weaker to things like Leyline of Sanctity because we only have the pulses to get rid of them now. Don't even have the Pride Mage to back it up. But hopefully if we run into that situation, we'll have a pulse. You know, right. And combo's already a bad matchup anyway. We do have the blind obediences still. Those are still staying in because they're good against the sneak attacks. They buy you time. They give you time. And that's what you need. I mean, if they can't sneak attack until your end step, then that means that all of your targeting, dis all of the all of the thought seizes are live at that point. They all are must be countered or else they have to put the creature into play and hope it's a gristle brand and draw seven cards which then means that they have to use that red mana, which means they either need a second red mana or you've bought yourself another turn, in which case you can try and hymn them, in which case they still have to respond because you don't, they don't know what all you have. So if you see a show and tell down comes blind obedience, suddenly they can't do the thing that they wanted to and they're stuck in a situation. Also, this will be good against the control decks, although I've been noticing a lot of them being this death blade BS. Really do hate the naming system. Um, so that may that may alter a little bit, but so far I do kind of like these. I don't want to keep them in. It will stop the Jun decks from being able to go blood braid, attack you for three, kill whatever, blah 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 blah. Um, the blood braids will be tapped. Uh, it also stops people from dropping in batter skulls to be able to block. It makes goblins absolutely upset. There's no other way to put it than upset. Uh, because they can't just like bile in a ton of stuff and attack you and alpha strike you in one turn to death. So, yeah. 
Uh, also, against the control decks, double top means that I can pay two and drain them for one. Yeah, that'll be nice. Uh, so that's if that ever does come up, which is another reason why there's the second top. Uh, anything else in here? Everything else looks pretty standardized. Uh, if you're wondering why I'm keeping the Mystics and dropping the Zeniths, I'm tired of using Zenith pretty much as a ramp spell or a night find. All of the lists that I've been watching develop are basically Shaman, Goyf, Knight. And yeah, I know you're saying, what else do you need? Well, you need to actually survive the game for those things to become important. And without having that ability to kind of maneuver around and, and do things, which I don't think Zenith does anymore. I think that when it first came out and everybody was learning how it worked, I think that it did a great job at that. But I don't think that it accomplished the goal. And the goal was basically to win the game. I think that what it did was it gave you an opportunity to have things, but they weren't ever used. So that's why. Stoneforge Mystic, I've enjoyed the equipment. I've gotten rid of it a couple times. I've cut down on its numbers, but I've never really enjoyed the deck with the Moxes without the Stoneforge Mystic. It's this column right here. If you take these out right here, take those three things out. This column is almost a win in itself if not dealt with. Well, it, they are wins in themselves if not dealt with. I mean, any deck that I'm hitting with the Mystic after it's gotten one of these two, and typically on the first turn, because I didn't like having to fetch the Jit all the time on the first turn, typically I will be fetching this on the first turn because there's a lot of things that it dodges, and them having to blow this up as basically a way to deal with me is extremely difficult. And otherwise, they get hit and I get cards. Everybody loves cards. Uh, Dark Confidant, the cards that I'll get from him, my cards are typically able to one for one a lot. Well, I wouldn't say a lot better. Uh, I was going to, but they're a lot more efficient at being good because I am going to be fetching out a bunch of stuff. I do have the three diamonds and 23 lands. So yes, there are 26 cards that will deal me zero damage. But look at all of the other cards. How many of these do you not want? Can you find one? I mean, it's, it is what it is. Library card selection in a deck that is filled with nothing but things that must be killed or kill everything. And then Bitter Blossom, which will win the game, stall out a game, or do whatever. And when it's coupled with the JIT, I won't have to worry about these. Uh, even with a Shaman, every creature in the yard is two safe turns with this thing. I have completely and utterly ruined my burn matchup. And we are playing in Moto, so that is a thing. But at the same time, I don't care about burn. It's one of those decks that it's a legitimate deck, and people should be terrified to all crap of it, but... I don't care enough to actually alter the deck to beat Burn, because if I do that, I'm going to lose to a lot more. So this is what I'll be giving a run here. I'm going to try and jump into a daily. It won't be today. I have to work today, and i got a couple other construction projects, but hopefully sometime soon here. If you guys have any comments or questions, wondering questions or whatever, I can do a Q&A and whatnot and review some or play some other games in the background or something while that's going on. I know I promised people like a Metroid run through and I've been away from that long enough that I don't even know if I can mothball right now. But yeah, so be it. I will see you all again another time. Bye-bye.